All right, in the last video, we practiced drawing some medians from the corner to the midpoint so that we could find that our centroid was always in the center or inside, they're all centers, we're always inside the triangle no matter what type of triangle we had, which is different from what we found when we did the altitudes. Okay, so no matter what type of triangle we have, our centroid of the triangle is always, always going to be inside the triangle. Always, always inside the triangle. Okay, inside. Kind of a fun little fact, it's the balancing point of the triangle. So it's the one where if you were to make a triangle and then like try to balance it on your finger, it's the one that would balance. Okay, kind of like you could spin it like if it was a basketball. Okay, so it's the one that would balance on your finger. Um, I did have a student a few years ago who found a piece of plywood in his, in his dad's work garage or whatever he had, and he found the midpoint of it, and, or the me median of it, of all three sides, and then found the centroid, and he brought it in, and we all passed it around, and we all balanced it on our fingers. And then he let me keep it. So if you have Miss Bishop for your teacher, You'll, and you come to sink time for this week's lesson, she'll show you that piece of wood and show you how you can balance it on your finger. It's really kind of neat. Okay? So let's look at what we know when we're told we have a median. Okay? So I have two figures here where we have medians. I have triangle WHA, and it says if WP is a median, what do we know about the figure? So if WP is a median... We know it starts at a vertex, and we know it goes to a midpoint, right? So it starts at a vertex, and it goes to a midpoint. We're looking at WP. So W is my vertex, which means we know something about P. P is a midpoint, which means if P is a midpoint, the definition of midpoint means it divides a segment in half. So it's dividing segment HA exactly into two equal pieces. So I also know that segment HP is congruent to segment AP. Okay, so that is all I know about this figure. Okay, they didn't tell me anything about HQ, so I don't know anything going on with this segment at all. I don't know anything about any of these other sides. All I know when I have a median is that I have a midpoint and two congruent segments. Okay? Now, this is the, the second time we've seen this picture because we also saw it with the altitudes. It's the exact same pictures. And yesterday, they told me that WY, or in the last lesson, they told me WY was an altitude. And we said, that means I know I have a 90 degree angle here. But today, it's not an altitude. altitude. Today, it's a median. So we don't know that this is a 90 degree angle like we did yesterday. It could be some other angle. It looks kind of 90-ish, but we can't prove it. Okay, all we know is we have a median, which means all we know is we have a midpoint that divides this into two equal segments. So if I have a median, then I know I have a midpoint. And I know that XW the segment is congruent to segment CW. And that's all I know in the figure. Okay? We're going to real quick learn a fun fact about the centroid and the distance of the, what the segment, what the centroid does to the length of the median. Okay? So, here's my next fun little fact about the centroid. The distance from the vertex to the centroid is twice the distance from the centroid to the side. Okay, the distance from the vertex to the centroid is twice the distance from the centroid to the side. So what that means is, notice I've got midpoints because these are the same, so this is a midpoint. These two are the same, so midpoint. These two are the same, so midpoint. So this is a centroid. Okay? 
The distance from the vertex to the centroid is twice the distance from the centroid to the side. So if I start at this centroid and I go to the side, however long this distance is, this one up here it takes two of these to make the one piece here. Okay, and that's going to be true for every single one of those centroids or one of those medians. So from the centroid to the side, not to the corner, to the side, however long that piece is, it takes two of those to get to the vertex. Okay, and the same thing for my last one as well. However long it is from the centroid to the side, it takes two of those to get to the vertex. Okay, so let's see how we can apply that in this figure here. Okay, they've given me lots of interesting information on this one. In triangle JKL, JE, KF, and LD are medians. Okay, so JE, JE is a median, so I know this is a midpoint, and this piece equals this piece. Okay, KF here is a median, so that means this F is a midpoint, and these two pieces are the same. And LD is a median, so D is a midpoint, and this piece is the same as this piece. Okay? Now they're telling me that GF has a value of 15. Well, GF is from, since these are all medians, this is my centroid. GF is the distance from the side, or the centroid to the side, and it's 15. I know it takes two of those to get back to the corner. So if it takes me 15 to get from the side to the centroid, it takes me twice that to get to the other. So this piece here is 30. Okay? Then I know that JG is 13. So J to G is 13. Now that's not to the side. This one's to the side, right? So it takes two of these to make 13. So what did I have to add together to itself to make 13? Or I can do the opposite. I can divide 13 in half, right? And get it takes 6.5 two times. 6.5 plus 6.5 will give me that 13. Okay? Then they're telling me that JL is 22. So J to L. So now I'm not looking at the median, I'm looking at a side, that's 22. If F is a midpoint and the whole thing is 22, then this is 11 and this side is 11. Okay? KE is 20. KE goes to the midpoint E and it's 20. That means from E to the rest of the side is 20, and this whole piece is 40. And the last information that they have given me here is DL is 24. So this whole thing here is 24, which means it's divided into one piece here and two pieces here. So really there's three equal pieces that make up that whole 24. So if I take 24 and I divide it into three equal pieces, that's going to be 8, 8, and 8. So 8, 8, and 8. If there's two 8s here, this piece is 16, because remember it takes two of the smaller pieces to make the longer piece. And together, my 8 and my 16 are 24. Okay, I'm going to put that in a different shade of green, because that's kind of hard to see. 8 and 16, so that together they make the 24. Okay, so now that we filled out the whole thing, which we wouldn't have had to start with, we could have just said KG, let's see if we can figure it out, but I bet this goes really fast and easy now. KG, well let's look, K to G, oh, that's 30, easy peasy. Okay, JE from J 
to e, so the whole thing I have to go 13, and then I have to go another 6.5, so that's going to be 13 plus 6.5, which is 19.5. And then f to l, f to l is 11. And k to l, k to l, that whole piece there, we already found to be 40. Then L to G, L just G is 16, and D to G is 8. Okay? All right, we do have a couple more examples that we're going to do in the next video, and then we're also going to look at how to find the centroid when we are given a graft triangle. Okay? Thank you so much for watching.